Welcome to Two Minutes with Mike, where I try to boil your noodles in the time it takes to make my noodles. Now, when Jesus was raised from the dead, the tomb was empty. No body could be found. Thomas was offered the chance to put his fingers into the wounds of Christ. Jesus ate with, the, with his disciples on multiple occasions after the resurrection. All of this is evidence that he was raised from the dead bodily, not just in spirit. Later, when he ascended to heaven, he did so in the sight of his followers, again in bodily form. He didn't leave his body behind. Now, this fact raises two important points. The first is that when Jesus chose to come to earth as a man to save us, it appears that he actually made a choice to become confined to a physical body for all time, to a human body for all time. Imagine the sacrifice of being an infinite spirit being voluntarily restricting yourself to the confines of a body. This is in itself a sacrifice far beyond our comprehension. The second implication of this is that Jesus still has that body, along with the scars from his torture and his execution. When we join him in eternity, we will be transformed with glorified bodies, perfect, incorruptible, whole, glorious. Our, our wounds and our scars, our deformities and our imperfections will disappear. There will only be one imperfect body in eternity, only one body that bears scars, the body of our Saviour bearing the scars that bought our freedom and our eternal life. Every time we look at him, we will re be reminded of the terrible price that had to be paid, and our response will be worship. The good news, of course, is that we don't have to wait till then to worship that way. We can worship him now, just as we will then, and have a taste of heaven on earth. Time's up. See you soon.